Yeah, I'll start off by saying, first of all, we're excited to get started um, with this 24 iteration of what the football Turk football family uh, will look like. We're in what we call our second phase of uh, our program. We just got out of our winter conditioning, affectionately known as Turp time, where our players get bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, Coach RD and his staff have done a tremendous job. Our nutritionist, Lauren, uh, our sports science people, Dr. Hall, um, Dr. Rooks have all you know, a lot of the, the, the things that go into our winter conditioning program is where we basically set the foundation for our season. And I feel really good about us coming out of this, uh, that part of our season. And now we go into the football phase. Uh, spring ball um, is here. We're looking forward to being back on the field today for the first time. Uh, you know, our schedule has been the same since I've been here. We're a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday practice team, and we do it this way. Uh, we start late, which gives us more time in our turp time season to get bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, we finish a little late, which allows us to really coach and teach uh, in all three phases, you know, offense, defense, special teams. And so by having a Tuesday, Thursday schedule, it gives us a day in between each practice to make corrections, to install, and to get things cleaned up. Um, but I'm excited about the roster, um, where it is today, and how we continue to build this thing. Um, in terms of both talent and culture. So um, I want to also talk about April 6th, um, you know, as we talk about our spring practice season, you know, we're taking a, game, uh, a practice up to uh, Morgan State, uh, what's also Baltimore Day. You know, that, that Baltimore region of our state uh, is an area that has, is really fruitful, has had a bunch of players that have come here and had great success. And so it's an opportunity for us to take the Maryland football brand up to Baltimore, uh, which we haven't done. You know, we used to play a game there every other year, and I definitely like to get back to that. But we are taking one of our spring practices on Saturday, on April 6th, up there, and we're going to partner with Coach Wilson, and, and they are a gracious host up there for what's known as Baltimore Day. Um, we're going to continue to work to do things like this to take the Maryland football brand throughout the DMV area. Um, we've had tremendous continuity on our staff. Uh, this year, and, and as, as I've said before, we're a developmental program, so I expect to lose coaches, I expect to lose players and staff because of the work that we've been able to do, do here and the success we've been able to have here. And so to bring back eight of the 10 coaches and all three coordinators allows for us to continue to, to have that continuity in, in all three phases. You know, we've got a couple of new additions, um, bringing coaches are back home. Uh, to coach our corners and, and, and to work with the star position, uh, which is our nickel position. Um, and then we also bring in Coach Robo. Um, came up from James Madison. I've known Robo for 15, 20 years. He's one of those guys that's recruited this region and this area really well. And he's going to serve as our assistant O-line coach. And so adding two veteran coaches that have ties and experience to this DMV area it was really important when we went to fill these positions. And, and I think we hit home runs with both those hires. Um, I'll be taking on a larger role this year. Um, Coach Gaddis is going to coordinate from the receiver position. And I'm actually going to go back into the quarterback room. Um, I'll work there with our graduate assistant, Eric Nigerian, who uh, you know now has become a graduate assistant. Um, as we've lost Kyle Edwards, who took a, a, a coaching full-time position down at the University of Richmond. And so uh, I'll be going back in the quarterback room with such a big decision to be made. I'm excited uh, to get back and, and have a, a, a position group to coach and call my own. Um, uh, my message to the team as we ramp up the 24 season is, you know, it's really important. We didn't meet our expectations last year as a, as a program, our expectations going into the season. And we had four four games that really kind of swayed us being able to meet the expectations and having gone back and studied those things, our program, our players, and everybody that's part of this thing understands that there are some things that we had control of that we didn't uh, take care of. And, and, and that didn't allow us to meet the expectations that we have. And so uh, as we move forward, our goal is to take that next step. And, and I said it a year ago. Uh, with the expansion of the playoffs to 12 this year and I think 14 in the next year, uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for the University of Maryland. And a lot of people, uh, you know, look at NIL and all these things and, and thinks it's a, a, a issue. I see it as a great opportunity for us as a program. And it's not just, as I've said before, it's not just on me as the head coach or our staff or our players. But now we actually get to allow our supporters, our fans, to all have some skin in the game. And so uh, I'm excited about this upcoming spring, excited to get started. 
and I guess with that, I'll open it up to whatever questions you guys have. Hey, Coach. Brandon, what's up, man? Good what's to up? see you. With, the, with it being the start of spring ball, where does the competition stand for the quarterback position? Where does it stand? Yeah, what, what have you kind of seen through with all your guys? Because I haven't seen Jack yet. Through the winter, what? what I mean, I've seen them work all really hard in the off-season conditioning program, but as we know, that has nothing to do with playing quarterback. And um, so, from a leadership standpoint, those guys have worked their tails off. You know, they they play a natural leadership position, but this is where I'll get to start drawing some opinions on what I've seen. And so, it's a fully an open competition throughout the first spring ball. I can't make it any clearer for you, Brandon. Okay. So nobody ask me again. I can't make it any clearer. Just want to make I sure. have, That's right. why I'm going in the room. All right. I have no idea who my starting quarterback is, and I am looking forward to figuring it out. And you will be able to ask me that the f Monday or Tuesday. When is my press conference? Tuesday before uh, UConn. So Tuesday before UConn, we'll get it answered. All right. Thank you. Uh, Coach, first, good to see you. Good to um, see you. With uh, with some of the new hires you mentioned on the offensive line, uh, I'm curious how uh, you know your, your new hire and Brian Braswell will kind of uh, fit together, and you know how you figure that'll help with some of the new guys you brought in, you know transfers, et cetera, on in that position. Yeah, uh, you know it's interesting that you'd ask that because you know I've had two O line coaches before in my career. I've had two O line coaches at New Mexico. We had centers, guards, tackles, tight ends. That is a position group. If you do research on it, man, it is a lot of moving parts with the offensive line. And there's no doubt in our mind that we look at what and where we need to take the next step as in a, as a program to get that to get to that next step or to take the next step. It's, it's up front in the Big Ten. You win in the trenches. And I saw us make significant gains in the trenches on the defensive side of the ball a year ago, uh, the way our defensive front played. And we've recruited really hard and really well to develop. And we have some really young guys. We I think we signed 10 high school offensive linemen because we're going to continue to recruit high schools to develop our culture from freshmen to seniors, hopefully. Now, we know with the changing landscape that that's not always the case, but adding Robo to the mix allows us to develop that position group faster. I can't wait. And Brian has done a tremendous job. We've had, I think, four NFL guys the last couple of years with, I think, DJ and uh, – and, and Gotti both having chances to get drafted and seeing Spencer make the Steelers and see Jalen down with the Titans. So for us to take the next step, I thought it was important to invest, and it allowed me to go back into the quarterback room. Hey, Locks, back here. Good to see you. What's up, big dog? Uh, not too much. Speaking of the quarterback room, uh, you know, you've had Talia here for several years. Was it weird coming in this morning for first spring practice now and, and Talia just not being here for this season? Yeah, it's been weird only because we, we had such a close relationship. We spent, as, as I said, we we watched every practice for the four years he was here together from 10 o'clock at night to sometimes 1 in the morning. And, and he and I have grown up together. He as a quarterback, me as a head coach. And, you know, it was a good four-year run. But you know what? All good things come to an end. And we're excited with the guys that we have in that room. And we've recruited some really good guys. And we've got a great opportunity for our uh, – you know, to, to, to develop that room and, and see if we can continue to build on a foundation that Leah has played a part in laying. And, and as you enter this wide open competition, as you mentioned. <laughs> wide open. Uh, <laughs> um, with all these guys coming in, it, obviously every quarterback's different, but is there anything you look for specifically that Talia did that you hope that one of these guys have or anything? I mean, other just other look at his playmaking ability. I mean, his ability to extend plays. And you look at the, I mean, this guy left here is our all time leading passer in this league. So. You know, I know it's really disturbing at times when you hear the, the, the hate sometimes that maybe he received. But he, he did his part for what we brought him here to do, which is to lay a tremendous foundation for us to grow and build this program into a championship-type program. So really thankful for that. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Coach, not to be a pain in the butt about this, but some of us had deadlines for summer magazines next week. Okay. Could you break down the strengths of the leading contenders for the quarterback job? Just talk That's a little bit. six of them. And if I – can I do it off the clock here? Because I, I really – like six okay. guys. Like Fair I, enough. I, I'm not, I don't leave anybody out. And let's just understand that if I just talk about three, then I'm going to have three parents emailing me saying, well, I guess I'm not in the mix. So I, I'd rather go through them all, do it the right way, because this is it's truly – I am excited about it, which is why I'm going in the room. Okay, can I have another rep then on my of question? <laughs> uh, 
How about the offensive line? How do you feel about where they are heading into this? You have so many new faces. That's the question. I mean, it's, it's a lot of new faces. Now, I think that what we've shown over the last couple of years is our ability to evaluate. And, you know, a year ago, we brought a guy in from North Carolina Central. Corey Bullock was an all-conference player there, and he started every game in the Big Ten and competed at a really high level. And I think he's a guy that you'll see playing on Sundays. Uh, we brought Gadi Ayeje in, who was a Division II guy down at Frostburg State, started four years, and he's invited to the Combine. So uh, we're losing some really talented guys, but we're also bringing back a, a, a few talented guys. And that's where our investment in bringing a second O-line coach in is to really help the growth. Because you know when you bring in a guy like Ball from Georgia, uh, he understands our system, because obviously Georgia's from the same football tree or the football family. But we do it a little bit differently here. And so, I, you know, we've got some talent. We're just young and we got to grow them up fast and, and nobody wants to hear that. And it's my job to do it. And so we've made some decisions to kind of help. And how that position group goes, I think will dictate quite a bit about our season. Hey coach, how you doing? What's up, can you introduce yourself? Simon Bugs from uh, CTV News. Okay, good to meet you. Good to meet you too. Um, so you, you touched on um, how you want the spring practice. You want to be able to clean up a lot of stuff. So I was wondering, what specifically do you want to clean up in order to um, help this team not only meet expectations 24, but maybe even exceed them? I mean, I think it's no no uh, no secret that we didn't run the ball as well as we probably needed to run the ball to win games in the Big Ten. We relied heavily on our quarterback and the skill that we have. And so I do think having, you know, you study what the last couple of champions in this league have been able to do, Michigan, um, they line up and they run the ball. Now, does that mean that Maryland's going to become ground terps? No, but I'm always big on if you can't hit the curveball, you got to work to figure out how to hit the curveball. And for us, the next step is us being able to run the ball, to control the tempo of the game, maybe to finish some games out, uh, maybe to start a little quicker. Uh, we, we face weather issues in the Big Ten late in the season. and. Sometimes I can remember playing at Wisconsin a couple of years ago where the wind was blowing sideways 80 miles per hour, and you got to line up and be able to, to move people off the line of scrimmage. And that's, that'll be my point of emphasis for us to take the next step. It's in the trenches, and offensively, we got to grow our guys. Hey, Coach. Hey, Ahmed, what's up? What's going on? Um, I know you mentioned, obviously, the QB, QB battle, whatnot, and um, you know we'll wait till that Tuesday press conference before the week one to see who the starter is. But just going into this spring, you know, obviously, get a chance to kind of work with the guys, and you're back in the room. Um, what does a successful spring for the quarterback room look like if there is no starter coming out of it? Well, I, I think, one, staying healthy. Um, two, I, I want to see great competition. I mean, competition has been the key to us having success we've had here because we had great competition at a lot of positions over the years. And I, what I've seen and the, 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 the secret sauce is the more competitive each position or each room is, usually you see the best. I saw that in our running back room a year ago. We had three guys that were like starters that all competed and, and, and it, we got better there. Um, we didn't have great depth on the O-line. And so when you look at the quarterback position, I think one, to be the starting quarterback here starts with protecting the football. And that's going to play very heavily in the metrics as we start looking at, hey, who's protecting the ball the better, best in scrimmages, live situations. You'll see quarterbacks live in the spring because, you know, it's one thing to stand back there in a the yellow jersey, protect it because of the color of your jersey. And it's another thing knowing that now you're live meat and I can be hit and I want to see how guys react and respond uh, under live bullets. And so, uh, you know, protecting the football, every drive in and in a kick, whether it's a field goal, a punt, or an extra point, those are the things that will dictate the quarterback run. And just to follow up, I know you mentioned Eric Nigerian will be able to help. Do you feel like just kind of being the, the fact that he was in the system within the program, obviously, and now he's going into his second year uh, into you know a coaching role? Um, how, how much, how integral do you feel like that helps? Eric's or? a GA. He's a graduate assistant, so he'll have a lot of other duties. But he also is very familiar with the system. He grew up in this system from the time I got here in 2019. He was part of it. Uh, I've seen tremendous growth. He's going to be a big time coach. We had the same out of Kyle Edwards a year ago. Kyle was with me at Bama, knew the system. You know, I kind of have a recipe that I like. Um, Eric being in that room with me gives me a chance to coach and groom him as he grows as a coach. But also, it gives me a bird's eye view as to that room and how they prepare and how much film they're watching and what are the things they're doing 
to prepare for practices and, and how they go out and execute. So I'm excited about Eric being with me in the room. And, and again, we, we lost a, 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 a great piece of our staff with Kyle leaving um, and going to Richmond. But you know what? I'm happy for Kyle that, and his family that he gets a chance to be a full-time coach. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to see him back here one day. Um, OK, my question is, what have you, um, I guess I know Perry Fisher kind of had like a bit of a breakout game during the bowl game. So I guess what have you seen from him maybe like leading up to the bowl game, like in the bowl game and like since till like now? Yeah, Perry's one of those guys that has kind of grown up fast. Um, you know, he was a quarterback in high school that we recruited to be a receiver. And then he requested to go over to the defensive side and, and you know, red shirted, didn't play very much as a freshman as he transitioned to a new position per se. Uh, but what I saw is those practices that we had leading up to the bowl game, and I, I say this every year, you know, with how we develop our team, I, I saw the light go on for Perry. Um, he's a guy that has length and size. He can run. He can play corner. He can play the star position for us. Um, and, and I think he can play safety if we wanted to. So very versatile guy. And, and what I'm hoping to see is the maturity because of the time he spent in our program translates to consistency from him. And, and that's the big thing for us. If Perry is a good player and has a chance to help us, but we need to see it consistently in every day, every part of his life. How are you doing, Coach? Hey. So you mentioned the off-season workouts and the turf time in your opening statement. And you always talk about the brothership in the program. Just how over time have you seen that grown since, since coming here? And how do you see it formed during that, that turf time and yeah. winter workouts? Yeah, you know, the brotherhood is forged and developed going through tough stuff together. And, you know, the, this I didn't invent this. This 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 Terp Time program has a history where it started back at Michigan State. And I know that Coach Saban, having worked there as an assistant, and he took it to Bama. I mean, the programs that, that, that utilize that, that system or that recipe, you look at the success they have. And so for me, uh, the brotherhood that's developed going through tough stuff together, uh, how our strength and conditioning staff uh, develops them. And a lot of times we put a lot on the physical, but it's the mental component. And that to me is the part of the game where I think we've been able to maybe gain a slight edge is from a, the, the, how we approach uh, every team in our league. And it's because of the work we do during turp time with our strength and conditioning program and the way it's set up. It's the foundation for, for any success that we've had. And just a quick follow-up to that. What are some of like the specific things maybe you do? I, one of the things I think back to is the one photo of you guys w with your shirts off flexing in the, in the weight room. What do moments like those do to build that brothership and that uh, bond? It allows a lot of negative comments about me, number one. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I don't read comments. And Alana, my assistant, is back here. She's, she's like batting away, fat boy, put your shirt on, <laughs> man boobs, all that stuff. So You're no. You know, I, the story behind that is I was walking after our 6 a.m. workout, walking through the weight room, and they were taking the picture that they take at the end of turp time. Mm -hmm. And a player said, Coach, what, you afraid to take your shirt off? And I've never been a guy that isn't confident. So took my shirt off, walked in, took the picture. Good stuff. I am who I am. Coach, nice to see you again. Uh, I'll, I'll my shirt on, of course, right? Of course, of course, of course. Obviously, in the next few weeks, there's a lot of unpredictability and a discussion about the spring transfer portal window opening. And just I was wondering, as a staff, how do you guys navigate that when you're trying to you know, pr build the roster you have now for the season and the, kind of this cloud over you guys? So how do you navigate where the portal is right now and just focusing on the season ahead? Well, if you're just starting to figure that out now, you're late. Um, we, we, we study our roster. We've built a personnel office that's led by Mercy Falez, our general manager. We've continued to build that side of our football building. It's the landscape we're in. Uh, you know, assistant coaches get a lot of credit for recruiting and signing players, but a lot of this work is being done behind the scenes, evaluating. We recruit three classes at a time, the upcoming seniors that are juniors now, the sophomores, as well as the freshmen that have potential. And, and so, we're prepared for the cloud. All right? We're going to lose. I used to say 20 to 30 percent of our roster, but the way the landscape has shown me is I've got a new team every year, and so I we're going to recruit the foundation of our team through high schools. We're going to try to. I just got finished telling our staff, man, every meeting we have with our team is a recruiting meeting because you're recruiting every player in our program every single day. We have free agency every day because until they put some guardrails around the portal, being able to leave when you want, come when you want, 
we, we just got to be prepared. And I can tell you right now, it's created a lot more work for my personnel office because we have to have a huge board. You know, I always used to say Maryland was an eight to one offer to commit ratio school. I've been at schools where it's two to one, like at Alabama, where every time I offer two kids, I get one commit. So to get 10 guys, you got to recruit 80. To get 20, you got to recruit 160. Those are large numbers. And Mercy uh, and his staff have done a tremendous job. Coach Griff, who's our chief of staff, of making sure we have enough names. And we understand, our fans need to understand that. I've learned to understand that we're going to lose players to the portal. Some we want to lose, some we don't. I always say the portal giveth and it taketh. But I think if you looked at how we've been able to replace guys that leave, uh, we usually improve ourselves as much as we can. Not that every player that left doesn't go have success, uh, but I think we always do a pretty good job of having people to come in and wear this Terp uniform and represent us. The DB room, kind of similar to the O-line room, where it's going to look a little bit different this year. A bunch Corners, of guys. not safeties. We lose Bo, but we got yeah. 13 back. We got Trader back. We got some good guys. Corners. Got a lot of guys in there. Yeah, so I was just kind of curious. What are you really looking for them during spring ball? During spring ball, and how do you feel about them going in? Uh, one, I'm looking for them to cover the man that they're responsible for covering and executing the techniques. You know, Coach Azar has been really demanding of that group. He's got a young group that, kind of like when you're raising young kids, you've got to hold them to the line in every part of their life. And we got a talented group, and it's a lot of fast long, athletic. So that room there is the one that it's a lot of competition in that room. And I'm excited for it. We got the right guy coaching it. And I'm excited to see that group of any group. That's the one that a year ago I talked about the, the young running back room. Well, this young corner room has potential. Thank you, coach. Thank you very much.